My friends, once again, I've got so much to tell you about, there's no point in even trying to recap it in this beginning here, so I'll tell you about all of it right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Wednesday, March 8th. And yes, I have a lot to tell you about, and I'll just start with this. And you might say, what is that? Well, it is a quarter inch drive, and you put that in your between your fingers like that, and you can reach up inside the guitar and unscrew those nuts in guitars like this with plastic bridges. <laughs> Les Thomas sent this to me. Les, thank you very much. I've got a couple of these, believe it or not, but they're all made different. They're made like this. I did use this inside that guitar. The difference is this has a round knurled knob and it's and even this is hard for my hands to turn. This thing's going to be awesome with these notches in it. I can I can grip that and I can turn that. That's really going to be nice. So I thank you very much, Lester. I, I didn't even know this one existed. And what's really cool, on this side you can put quarter inch sockets and on this side you can insert uh, different kinds of drivers and bits and things. So it's really cool and uh, it is reversible. It's a ratchet action, so I love it. Thank you very much, Les. I really appreciate it. Well, I briefly showed this and you saw it had strings on it. It's all finished, got her done, got her all polished up, looks great. Some of you will be just really disappointed because I did not take the bridge pad out. Yesterday morning I got out here real early, 7 a.m., uh, before the tree guys got here to take down those big trees. We'll tell you about that in a minute. But anyway, I inspected it really good. And I, I thought, you know, I could be opening up a huge can of worms here to take that bridge pad out. Because, you know, I don't mind taking a bridge pad out if they're busted, if there's a problem, you know, if they're uh, not in the right place or whatever. This one's sort of not in the right place. So that's the one reason I really wanted to take it out. And it is made out of plywood. so. It's got two strikes against it, but it didn't have three. If it had the third strike against it, and you might be saying, what's that third strike? Well, if it had been loose anywhere, I'd have been ripping it out. I looked at it really, really, really close yesterday, and it wasn't loose anywhere. And I mean nowhere. And, and I really got the mirror on all sides of it and looked at it really close. And you might say, well, I'd still take it out because it's plywood or, you know, and it, and it ends at the back of this bridge. But you have to also realize, and I've said this many times, there's no zipper. And you're dealing with plywood, which is, it's not really what you call a hardwood, but it's stiff and it's, it's difficult to get it out when you can't see what you're doing and you're taking a very sharp tool and you're just pulling for all your worth. See, there's no zipper, you have to break it out. Well, guess what's softer than the plywood? This top is softer than the plywood. And so you're tearing it out of there and you always run the risk of busting something on the top. Because it didn't have the third strike, I decided I'm just gonna live with it like it is. See, you can always go and do more later. I always say do the easy thing first, and I've always said that, and I think most of you that have watched a lot of my videos have heard me say that many times. Always do the easy thing first. So the easy thing in this case was live with the bridge pad that's in there, Go ahead and get her strung up and get her playing good and man this thing is a million dollars compared to the way it came in here. The action is about 85 I think on the bass and about uh, 65 to 70 on the treble so it's really good. In fact I'll just go ahead and hit a chord for you this morning so you can kind of hear how it sounds. I also have checked the intonation on this you know of course I used my intonation rig to set the intonation and let me tell you it's as perfect as you can get one to go.
that's about all I can get out of these arthritic hands this morning. <laughs> and that wasn't very clean, but I'm not going to redo it. It just hurts too much. But anyway, it does sound good. Very nice guitar now. Yeah, there's not much chance anybody's going to want to put a plastic bridge back on there. <laughs> it really does sound good. The intonation is just spot on. So I ask you, with the intonation being spot on, I mean, it's right on the money. Why do we need to intonate up there? <laughs> we don't need to. There's no reason to. This method ain't broke. And there's no reason to have to do anything up here. Okay, moving on. I got a lot more to talk about. Here we go. Well, before we move on too far, let me just say that now that I've got that Gibson uh, guitar finished, I will try to put that video out this weekend, assuming I can get it all put together because it's, you know, quite a few clips to get put together for the weekend, but I'll make my best effort and I imagine we'll get it done. In addition, we might as well just show you what the next project is. So here it is. Yes, the next project is an old fiddle. And it's a nice looking old fiddle. Look how beautiful that wood is. I'm trying to look and just get an idea how old it is. Let me see if there's a label in it. That sometimes helps. Well, the label says Dominicus Montagana and it's got Cremona, Italy, and it says 1723. Do I think this is that old? No, probably not. Um, you know, I gotta say though, it's pretty old, I think. I do think it's pretty old. This could be a, mock, a, a knockoff and a 1923, you know, version, because that's what they did a lot. They, they put labels in these violins in the late 1800s and the early 1900s that were exactly 200 years off of the original. So this could be a copy of an original made in 1923 is what I'm guessing. But I also look at it and go, it kind of looks older than that. So I'm not really, I'm not a violin quote unquote expert, like the end all be all expert. I know a lot about them, but this could be pretty old. I mean, it could be, do I think it's 1723? Well, I got my doubts, but I can't rule it out either. So I don't really know. I gotta say the label looks pretty old. I don't know, it kinda looks too neat to be that old in a way, the, in terms of the printing. But it looks real old. <laughs> so, I don't know, I don't know. I can't really say. But I'm sure it's in for a setup. Unfortunately, it's had a lot of repairs to it over the years that weren't done very well. I don't really recall how far he wants to take this. And I don't have it written here. I thought maybe I did. But I think this is just a basic setup, I think. But we'll find out. I'll get a hold of the customer and make sure that I'm doing the right thing. You know, another reason I know that it's for sure pretty much handmade and not machine made is because this is way off center. And I say way off, but it's, it's skewed this way. There's more space here than there is here. This is a very narrow channel here. This is a bigger channel here. So if I'm being critical, this probably does look like it's handmade for sure. Usually I can just look at them and go, no, that's not, that's just a copy. This one I'm not 100% sure on. <laughs> so whatever I do to it, I'm gonna be very careful with it because of that. But unfortunately, someone else has already not been that careful with all the problems that it's got here on the front. Cool old violin either, either way, and one way or the other, we'll get her fixed up and let you hear what it sounds like once we get that far. You probably have noticed that the furnace is running in the background. Well, I typically turn those off when I think about it, but in this case, that's the first time this furnace has run since the weekend. And it is Wednesday, and I've tried it every day and it wouldn't work in any of those preceding days. It's working today and it seems to be working just fine, so I'm letting it run. <laughs> I'm not taking the chance of turning it off because it's been pretty nippy in here every day working in here. You'll recall the last instrument video I put out was on that uh, Martin guitar. Well, the owner of that Martin guitar picked it up yesterday afternoon and he decided to stay, have dinner with us and play music with us at Dickie's Barbecue Pit in Rolla, Missouri. So here's a very short clip of him playing his guitar after it was set up. Guitar. I love it. It well, plays good. so good and sounds great. Well, prove it and play something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Beautiful. Good job. His name is Dan Lampton, and Dan uh, seems to thoroughly enjoy his instrument, and uh, he is a very good musician and a good singer, too. We did a lot of his songs last night, and they were very, very well done. So, Dan, thanks for sitting in with us. We sure did have a good time. I mentioned the tree folks were here yesterday. It was a, a young man that owns the business and his helper, and they did a really good job. I was uh, impressed with the work. I'm no slouch when it comes to cutting trees. I know all about that. And the difference was here, it was gonna require either a bucket truck or climbing the tree. Bucket trucks rent for more than I could pay these guys to do the work. So it was easier to just pay these guys to do the work and take them down. And what they did was climb and top the trees and then take them down safely. I really think there was good potential that I could have just dropped them in place with my equipment that I have and probably not had a problem. But there are so many other things to hit in addition to the house that I decided it's probably better just to pay somebody to do it this time. And that's what I did, and it worked out really, really well. I'll just give you a short video clip, and I will put out a longer video on a number of the trees coming down uh, at a later time. But right now, here's a short clip. Take a look. Well, hope you enjoyed that little clip. It was a, a good successful day. I hated to see all the big trees coming down, but on the other hand, when a tree reaches the end of its lifespan, you know that they need to come down, especially when they're right by your house. They will come down one way or the other. There is no question about that part. And the deal I made with those boys was all they had to do was get them on the ground. I'll take care of the rest of it. So these are big trees and trust me, there's a lot of the rest of it to take care of. So I'm going to probably spend the rest of the day doing that if it's not raining. It's, a, it's right on the edge of raining as I speak to you this morning. But I'm going to try to get out there with the Bobcat and get at least some of the bigger pieces picked up and moved. And I, yes, I will be logging a bunch of those. And when I take my break, I'll be cutting a lot of that into lumber. And a lot of it is walnut. So it's really high grade stuff. Uh, assuming that the previous owners of the farm didn't drive a lot of nails in it. And uh, that's to be seen, and my guess is they probably did drive a lot of nails in it. But you just never know. I'm hoping for the best. I'll remind you once again to take a look at my son's channel, Homestead Horsemanship, and especially check out his new videos on Oliver, the rescue horse. Oliver is at the farm now, and uh, they are uh, pouring the feed to him, and uh, they've got vet appointments already made, and they're going to try to get this horse to come back to life, if you will. The uh, horse really was in poor condition. I don't really know why. I don't think necessarily that the people were mistreating it or anything like that. I think they had so many horses they just couldn't pay specific attention to this one. You could almost call that neglect, but when you have that many horses and, you know, and you're feeding and taking care of that many, and I think they had a lot. I think they had 50, 60 head. Well, sometimes one of them slips through the crack, and Oliver the Clydesdale seemed to be that one. Anyway, he's not slipped through any cracks now, and he's being well cared for, so I would suggest you check out those videos. I'll have a link in the description. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. I very much appreciate you tuning in. If you enjoy what you're seeing here, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Those YouTube algorithms, uh, nobody understands them, but the thumbs up definitely does help get more views. So thank you very much for doing that, and we will see you tomorrow. Yeah.